So Apple changed the way you update your device to a new iOS beta, making it very difficult or basically impossible for someone without a dev account to actually install a beta on their device. And they did the same with watchOS as well. This is a new update on iOS 16.5. So in this video, we're going to talk about that and nine other new features that you can expect to get on your device with the new iOS 16.5. So now there's a very different way to actually update your watch to a watch OS beta software. So the first thing you will need to do is head on to your watch app and head on to settings right here, general. And then when you go to software update, you will get here the same options that you get on iPhone as well. So you will have beta updates here and you will find here the dev and the public beta. Of course, if you have an Apple ID, which is connected to your Apple watch. And that ID is actually a dev ID. You can go ahead and select the dev beta. Otherwise you will have to use the public beta. Now, if you don't see this on your Apple watch app, what you need to do is go ahead and find the feedback app that you get on your device when you install a beta, and then make sure you have added your Apple ID, your Apple watch actually there. So when you go to your profile here, you will go to your devices and then just make sure you tap basically here on the device and add it to your Apple ID here to your, to your devices. And then you will get this option right here to update your app watch to a beta directly from the watch app without having to install a profile. Let's take now a quick break and thank you PDF the sponsor for today's video, which is a multi-platform PDF editor that allows to annotate, sign, organize, sync, convert, OCR and also protect your PDF files. UPDF is available on Mac, iOS, Android, and Windows. And for all of these platforms, you only need one license. It makes it very easy for you to organize your PDF files and of course, find the PDF files that you need. With some amazing editing tools where you can edit your PDFs, text, and also image, and things like the ability to crop your PDF files or to organize pages on your PDF files. As easy as that, you can organize pages or even convert your PDF files to any of the other files that you want. You can also use the amazing OCR feature, which will let you easily scan text from searchable PDFs and image-only PDFs as well. Go ahead, give it a try by checking the link right down below and get 54% discount on UPDF a license for all of your devices and also get a free gift, a Joysoft password remover. New to iOS 16.5 is also the ability to always play sounds for payment apps like Stripe. So when you go to settings, you go to your apps that you use, and then you will get here the ability to enable always play sounds, which will basically play the tap to pay sound regardless whether your switch here is on mute or on ringer, the sound will always play if you have it enabled here. Now, of course, one of the biggest updates to iOS 16.5 is the new sports tab right here. So you will have a dedicated sports tab right at the bottom of the news app where you can get all the information and if anything you need to know, all the news and all that regarding all the sports that you're interested in. And here we'll have basically a filter where you can filter like different leagues and different sports, which is really, really useful. Another change that you will notice right here is that the following and the search tab have actually been merged together. So you can see it's kind of interesting how they did that. So you will have basically the search loop there on the icon, but it says following. So all the things that you're following will be right here. And then of course, at the top, you will also have the search bar where you can search anything you need. There's also another really interesting change here on the news app. You will have a new button right there at the top to suggest more or less. So it has been placed at the top there. So you can see those like fingers here. If you tap on it, it says basically suggest more or suggest less, whatever you want there. So you can now actually do it from the button right here. Now this button was present on iOS 16.4 as well on the news app, but now it has changed its place. Now another change here on the news app is that the next and previous arrows are now missing. They have been basically removed. Now you can actually move by swiping like this between different articles, but you cannot go with the arrows that used to be right here on the news app. And also on the news app, if you tap on the three dots right there, you will now get options for your text size. So if you tap there, you will get the AA button right there where we can basically, of course, change the text size and all that. That used to be right here. Now it's under the more menu. 
a smaller change here on the stocks app instead of percent now it actually says percentage so that's just a wording change right there on the menu where you go to actually sort your list of stocks and under the hood there's also an option for multi-view for sports on the tv app which actually hasn't been released yet with ios 16.5 but it's just beta 2 so you can expect that to come with probably the next beta and the last but not least feature is a feature actually that was here with iOS 16.5 beta 1, but it has been removed with beta 2. I don't know if Apple did that intentionally or it's just a bug, but it was pretty cool the ability to record the screen of your iPhone with Siri, but now you cannot actually do that, so we can try it. Record my screen. But as you can see now it actually doesn't work. And now let's talk about performance and battery life, which of course are very, very important with every update. So the performance is here with Geekbench 6. We got this score. So the single core score is at 2,532, which is actually quite good. The same goes here for the multi-core score. It's also really good with 6,322, which is actually also a great score. So otherwise, I was 16.5 actually performs really good. I didn't have any issues using this update it has been like three weeks now from the release of the first beta and didn't notice any like major problems with this update when it comes to performance speed and all that stuff and now let's move on to battery and see how iOS 16.5 is performing when it comes to battery life. So here we have basically the battery performance for the last 10 days. So yesterday at around probably 95% battery, we got eight hours and 30 minutes. Keep in mind here that this is at 98 right there on the battery health. So pretty much you can see the past few days we got similar scores of course this will always be different based on what you were doing that day whether you were using wi-fi or seller or maybe playing any game which i actually was here so you can see where we got like less we were playing games there but again battery life nothing really really huge when it comes to like comparison it with iOS 16.4 kind of similar to iOS 16.4 but in my opinion it has actually been quite good. So when it comes to release date probably today we will get a new beta which will be beta 3 of iOS 16.5. Now there are reports that this update will actually come out in June. Hopefully that won't happen. I really expect Apple to actually release this somewhere around the second to third week of May. We're currently on beta two and we will probably get another three betas before the RC version and then the public release. So we're looking like or the, like around four weeks before the release of iOS 16.5 to the public, which actually will be one of the last big updates to iOS 16 before we move on to the new iOS 17 beta one. So that's it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video go ahead leave a like if you did also don't forget to subscribe for more and i'll see you on the next one